My name is Dr Richard George, I'm a Principal Research Scientist with the Department of Agriculture and Food. This presentation is going to talk you through uh, wheat belt valleys, uh, salinity management and use a couple of examples to demonstrate uh, why the valleys are saline and how that's changing over time. But focus on what it takes to actually change the extent of salinity or manage the future risk. And I'll use an example um, using uh, some field data and a little bit of modelling to talk to you how tr things like trees and uh, perennial pastures and salt land management systems uh, give you a, a tool to manage the future extent of salinity. This uh, presentation is a focus on wheat belt valleys and we're going to talk about how salt land pastures fit into managing them. Wheat belt valleys. This is a diagram or a picture of uh, an area in the southeastern wheat belt, a typical valley with an extent of salinity and agricultural land. Wheat belt valleys contain most of the salinity in the wheat belt itself and the areas where most of the risk or hazard is. What we've shown to date is uh, it's very difficult to manage uh, wheat belt valley salinity and valley water tables. Um, they're amenable to uh, systems that contain their ex extent. They're amenable to systems that are adapt to uh, the extent of and, and significance of salinity. And so they, they focus, or well, this presentation will focus on explaining how different treatments and different management systems uh, provide control or at least uh, profitable use of saline land uh, that's at risk or is currently saline. The other thing to note is in wheat belt valleys they contain most of the hazards and in some cases those hazards can be managed and in fact recovered or protected by extensive engineering and similar works but for the majority of farmland we're talking about trying to develop systems that reduce the severity and increase the productivity. All right, let's look at the two extremes of wheat belt valleys uh, and, and in the example of salinity. Here's an example uh, from near Calabarin in a catchment called Wallopton Creek and this bore is located very close to this picture up the top right hand side. Uh, depth to water table uh, ranges between a half a metre and a metre and a half from the surface and we've monitored a bore near here for since the mid and early 1980s. So the diagram in the bottom left is a plot of water tables over time and how rainfall trends uh, have changed and how we use those rainfall trends to forecast where water levels uh, uh, have, may have been in, in our monitoring period. So like, uh, like all good projects, uh, they don't necessarily run to plan and in this particular case you can see we monitored water tables uh, over a period of about four years in the late 1980s and then picked up the monitoring in 2005. So the blue lines with the dark blue dots are the actual water table levels and you can see that those water table dynamics uh, are strong, the seasonal patterns, you can see water tables change between one and a half and even less than half a metre and that pattern still exists into the late 2000s. What you can also see there is a red line which is our best uh, mathematical means of trying to forecast where water tables could have been or would have been if we had have had that complete monitoring set. And that pattern is driven by the blue line which is a summary of changing rainfall patterns over time. So that water table depth over time has pretty much maintained its position around about a metre from the surface. And that's a saline valley, a valley with very little barley grass majority of scalded land and that uh, is, is at equilibrium. In other words, the water table may change from season to season, but the salinity of that site is pretty much unchanging. Here's another and completely different valley. This one has no salinity in the upper catchment. It's still at risk. So these are the valleys where sometime in the future they'll change from having a hazard to having an actual risk. This plot uh, in the bottom left shows you a bore located near the picture in the top right where water tables have been monitored since the late 1990s. When we started monitoring at this bore the depths of the water table were a bit over 19 metres and today those water levels are currently about 17 and a half uh, metres and that's at the end of 2009, early 2010. So that water levels have risen a metre and a half, a metre and a half, 
over that period of time. And typical of wheat belt valleys are rising at between 10 and 20 centimetres a year. So salinity here is still some considerable time off. Um, and despite changes in rainfall conditions, which are what that black uh, dotted line is, you'll see that that trend is fairly continuous. So we've got two types of valleys, those that are saline and those that are still at risk. Okay, for those that have shallow water tables, um, some valley soils move in and out of salinity, or at least they move into salinity in, in, in episodes or in pulses. Here's an example for a bore where we monitored uh, and could actually see the effect of a large uh, summer thunderstorm moving through this landscape. Um, around the Coolan area in January 2006, there was a period of brief flooding and, uh, and waterlogging for periods of several days. After a 200 millimetre plus tropical storm uh, came in and dumped flooding conditions across this particular valley. The diagram in the bottom left shows uh, that particular rainfall event that you can see in January 2006 and the water level response to that. You can also see back in January 2000, um, we didn't actually have water level records because this bore wasn't drilled until just after a similar event in January 2000 and you can actually see the water tables still falling from that other previous flood. The water tables in the January 2006 event rose from somewhere around about two metres below ground and this bore shows a shallower and a deeper bore at exactly the same location. The water levels in the shallow bore, um, which are the higher ones, um, rose to within about 60 centimetres of the surface as a result of that particular rainfall event. And the farmer who manages fairly heavy soils and some parts of this paddock that you can see are red soils and their gill guide. And in the crop in the following autumn uh, after rain, uh, this rainfall, so we're going into sort of April, May period, had a very uh, significantly delayed germination and uh, after 2006 developed scalding as a result of uh, some of this particular this particular flood event. So you've got valleys that are permanently saline if you like with shallow depths to water tables and you've got some other valleys that are probably likely to oscillate depending on rainfall conditions and here's just one example from a summer storm. Okay, so let's look at how we actually use the data sets in our, in our monitoring, our long-term monitoring. Uh, data sets from farmers mapping of extent of salinity and tools like Land Monitor that we have forecasts for. For a valley in the, uh, in the central wheat belt, 300, 330 millimetre rainfall um, of, of recent days. And here's a plot of the depth to water table in that catchment using all our monitoring bores. And this is a very typical wheat belt catchment with a fairly typical monitoring network that we have of say 10 to 20 bores located in this particular catchment. And here's the depth of water table. So you can see that down in the lower areas, the water tables are well above, well it says 14 metres, but they're only one to two metres from the surface. When you go into the upper catchment, you can see water tables uh, are well over 20 metres, and in some cases, up to 30 metres and that's the earliest uh, rainfall, earliest water level conditions and this would have been approximating the, the post clearing, soon after clearing depths of water tables in this catchment. In some catchments we have very modern monitoring and most of our monitoring uh, in the department started in the 80s and in some catchments in, like this one we only have monitoring from 2000 onwards. But what we do have is farmers' bores put in for water supply, and in some cases we have good records. So the top half of this diagram shows two farmers' bores that had records in the 1950s, uh, water tables down 25 to 30 metres, which we were able to go back to relatively recently to the same bores and find the water tables had risen up to be now to be 5 and 10 metres below groundwater level. And what we can do in our models is we can use um, various tools in the models to try and match those water levels that we can use to calibrate into the future. The bottom half of that diagram is one of our longer term monitoring bores and that shows the models predicted trends in water tables over time and how our 
but our physical observation matched that model trend. And in this particular catchment, we were matching the forecast trend around with around about an 80% accuracy. The other thing to note in this diagram is how a lot of the water table rise has occurred in the past, especially in the period through the 50s through to the early 80s, when rainfalls were slightly higher than they've been in the last 20 to 25 years. Okay, so let's now look at how that's changed the depth of water tables over time and how much there has, has with a shallow water table. Across here on the left-hand diagram, you can see the catchment in, coloured, in colours. The, the top right-hand edge is down to the Salt Lake Country and obviously the, top, uh, the bottom left-hand, uh, which is the southwestern area, is, is highly ele elevated land sitting at almost 400 metres above sea level um, with valleys with very deep depths to water table. So here the model tells us that we've got water tables within in the red areas are, are within a metre and what you might have a little more, more difficulty seeing is these are the farmers uh, maps where the water table uh, is shallow and in fact the cross hatching is where the saline land exists and you can see mapping slightly changes for farmers but there's a very good match between what farmers are mapping as exactly as, as saline land and where we're mapping water tables at a metre with our bores. And the model is, as I said before, 80% uh, on the same level of water levels and bores. So using the trends that we have in our bores and using the trends that exist from climate and rainfall, in this particular catchment, we're forecasting that by 2030, the area with a shallow water table will have increased from 4,000 hectares to 8,000 hectares. So that's another 20 plus years out.